As someone that's been making videos about space for the past few years, I'm actually super fascinated when someone releases a new way for us to visualize the universe. Or, more specifically, for me to help you visualize the universe by then introducing you these various tools. Now, for many years I've used tools like Space Engine, which procedurally generates various planets and various stars and also shows us the universe to some extent, but I've also discussed various maps created by various scientists that actually provide an extremely accurate and very realistic representation of, for example, all of the local space, including various stars, various nebula, various types of supernova remnants, or even shows the view of the night skies if it was visible to us in, for example, radio light. The links for all of this should be somewhere in the description below. But today we're going to be talking about a new creation by a team from the John Hopkins University that actually helped us visualize something a little bit differently. They sort of help us visualize pretty much the entire universe all at once. Something that's actually extremely difficult for the human brain. And in this case we're actually talking about all of the galaxies. Galaxies going back all the way to the beginning of the universe. But they do so in a very brilliant way using extremely accurate observations from a lot of recent surveys. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be exploring some of these maps, and specifically that last map I mentioned, because for a lot of us, it's basically the only way to try to understand what the universe is, and how it actually looks if we were to somehow imagine everything all at once. The map that can be found in the website below, with a simple name, the map of the observable universe. From the Milky Way to the edge of what can be seen. And exploring this will only take you a few minutes, but will actually teach you quite a lot about the universe just by looking at a few pictures here. And what's really intriguing about this particular map is all of it is actually based on actual data of nearly 200,000 different galaxies collected over the past few years by the SDSS, Sloan Digital Sky Survey that has been actually releasing data pretty much every year for the past 22 years or so. And so as this website tells us, everything we see here, every dot, is a galaxy. Or actually sometimes several galaxies orbiting around one another, with the actual map at the end resembling something like this. Now this is probably one of the better ways of representing what the actual universe very likely resembles, with us obviously being right there on the bottom, a super super tiny dot being the Milky Way galaxy itself. But everything else, every other dot, is another galaxy, one of 200,000 galaxies, very different types of galaxies, captured by various surveys in the last few decades. And so what exactly are we seeing here and what does this map show us? Well first of all it's only approximately 90 degree view of the night skies as you can kind of maybe see from the pizza shape that it's creating. But it is showing us pretty much the entire universe during 13.8 billion years of existence. With the earliest light, the so-called cosmic microwave background, seen as the outer shell or the pizza crust of this pizza slice. And you can kind of see that between the CMB and some of the earliest galaxies we've discovered so far, there is a bit of a gap. Not a lot is known about what happened during this period, and this is exactly what the James Webb Space Telescope is going to help us understand in the next few years. It's really really good at seeing exactly what's happening during those particular periods of time. But as you can see from this explanation on the website, this is really just a tiny slice of everything. It's basically just to show us what sort of shapes and what sort of structures the galaxies form in the universe, and what the whole thing might look like if you were to look at it from the outside. And I guess the first and the most obvious question here is, what's with the colors? Why are things so different in terms of the coloration? Now this is obviously the concept a lot of you are familiar with, the redshift effect. Due to the expansion of the universe, as the light travels, it changes its frequency, becoming less energetic over time, or essentially increasing in wavelengths and changing the light from blue to red or in some cases, especially for the most distant objects, from the UV light to something along the lines of infrared light that can then be easily visible to the James Webb telescope. And so here, within approximately 3 billion light years away from planet Earth, the majority of galaxies are going to be producing a lot of blue light, with some galaxies, elliptical galaxies, producing yellow light, but for the most part, the large spiral galaxies are going to be responsible for most of the light produced. And so because of the active star formation in a lot of these galaxies, for the most part, the light is going to resemble something like this. But as we travel farther back in time, at a distance of 3 to 5 billion light years away from us, we're going to start seeing a lot more elliptical galaxies, mostly because they're much, much brighter, but also generally are much larger in size as well. So they're much easier visible from faraway distances. And so as we keep looking farther and farther back in time, things start to become more yellowish at first, and then start to become more reddish. 
And so here we find ourselves approximately 5 to 7 billion years ago. And this is where a lot of the galaxies that we're seeing are usually going to be elliptical galaxies as well. But in this case, their light is redshifted, so they start to appear more red. Which is kind of why we get the blue, yellow and red in this particular pizza slice as well. But you may notice that, a little bit after that, things start to appear blue once again. So what exactly is causing that? And that's of course after a redshift of approximately 1. At this point, most of the other galaxies become kind of difficult to see. But these types of galaxies, quasars, become extremely easily visible. And some of the closest quasars end up producing blue light. We've actually discussed quasars before and even the formation theory behind them. You can find one of these videos in the description below. But in a nutshell, these are really massive galaxies, very active galaxies, whose massive black holes end up creating huge amounts of light in the center and whose extremely powerful jets can then be seen from pretty much the limits of the visible universe. And if these jets are pointing directly at us, they become even more bright and are actually then called blazers. And so that's kind of all of those blue dots we're seeing anywhere between 8 to possibly 12 billion years in the past or at the redshift 1 to maybe about 4. There are naturally some other galaxies visible here as well, but the majority are quasars. But as we go back in time, at some point, only some of the most visible, most powerful quasars remain visible at really far away distances. And because they're so distant from us, their light is now going to be redshifted as well. Which is essentially why a lot of this blue light first becomes slightly yellowish, but then for the most part, all of the most distant quasars are usually going to be mostly red. Over here, when the universe was approximately 1 to 2 billion years old, or at the redshift 4 and higher, that's when things get very mysterious, and at the moment we don't really know what's going on there. That's exactly what James Webb is for. It's going to help the scientists solve all of these mysteries. And then, except for color, one more thing that's really apparent here is of course the structure. None of this is randomly distributed, and you can sort of see that the galaxies form a very interesting web-like structure. This is what the scientists usually refer to as the cosmic web. The concept we've discussed in some of the previous videos you can find in the description. And so that's the structure you can kind of see if you look closer at the formation of these galaxies across the universe. Today it's believed that the cosmic web is responsible for quite a lot of things, including the evolution of galaxies, including the distribution of matter in the galaxies, and potentially a lot of other things we still don't understand. And then we reach the end of the map. At this point, nothing else is visible, and that's essentially the edge of the observable universe, with this part right here being of particular interest to modern research. And so personally, I was super excited to see this map because it definitely helps communicate science in such a better way, in a very visual, very intuitive way. Something I'll definitely be using quite a lot in some of the future videos, and so I'm super grateful to the people responsible for this map and for all of the data that was collected over the past couple of decades. And so definitely a super exciting map to help people like me explain science a little bit better. Which actually kind of reminds me of one of the first attempts to create this that started a few decades ago and is actually known as the Atlas of the Universe. This was created by Richard Powell in the early 2000s, but it essentially kind of shows us what the local space looks like by zooming out and by helping us imagine the universe with essentially the solar system somewhere right there at the center. And so this particular map inspired quite a lot of other science communicators and quite a lot of astronomers to try to create their maps afterwards. And also because a lot of the data and observations in this particular map are slightly outdated, it's not as accurate as some of the new maps we use today. The link for this map is also in the description below. On that note, go check out the pizza slice map by yourself, or show it to someone who would like to learn more about what the universe actually looks like. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.